Good morning. My name is Adam Khan, and I'm the Rational Investor. I hope you guys all had a nice week. Uh, little ups and downs in the market. Beginning to feel like we have a short-term pullback that might have some follow-through because people seem to be a little overly optimistic right now. But I guess we'll see, you know, that that all plays out. Longer term, I I still think everything's okay. Um, I see the other videos and the nervousness out there, and I think that's all good. I mean, I agree with a lot of it. We spent a ton of money, so inflation is natural. It's hard to imagine the dollar won't weaken. The yield is inverted, usually an indication of a recession. And on top of that, the Fed's rate is rates more than they ever have in a very short amount of time. Those are all re recessionary indicators. The thing is, unless we have the unemployment that goes with it, I just don't see the same type of devastation that we've had in other recessions. You know, maybe our GDP drops and by by definition, we have a recession, but until we see unemployment become a problem, which, which of course it could, you know, if people are employed and making money, the economy should still chug along and do okay. So despite all of those things, economy still th seems okay to me and to be fair, I think some things have overshot to the upside and some things have overshot to the downside. And, excuse me, that was driving me nuts. In equities in particular, I think as they refer to them as the Magnificent Seven, they've had quite a run and probably pushed things a little too far for, to the upside short term. But everything else is, has been, I don't know, dragging along. I think they'll come in the other way. You know, you look at a company like Pfizer that didn't have perfect earnings, but they weren't terrible either. Um, they've lowered their guidance and whatever else. At the same time, Pfizer. You know, my guess is, give it a year. The, they were trading at like 36 or 37 last I looked. Uh, I bet a year from now, trading around 40. And while that doesn't sound exciting, that's, I don't know, 7, 8, 9% return in a year, plus you're getting a 4.5% dividend. I mean, what could be better than that? You, you might end up 10, 12% return on a boring old stable company just because the ebbs and flows of, of their cycles, you know, and and that everything is a little overheated in the things that have been going on. Since everything is so easy to change on such short-term basis, everybody wants to move into the things that are performing a, a little too quickly and ignore the things that are underperforming. So I think this causes these three-month, six-month cycles where both sides go a little too far squeezing people out who who don't just leave things alone you know you, if you watch my other videos the the main thing i try to get across is you know like cooking cut type of low and slow you know slow and steady stick with good companies let them play out if their earnings continue to grow over time stocks go up over time and then my favorite Whoops, I, yeah, it's still on, sorry. And then my favorite subject, housing. You know, housing slowed pretty good. I think either we're at the 2% or, or lower, we could be going down in prices. And, and I think the Fed's got it where it wants it. You know, my buddy Brad and I go back and forth on this. I think we could see rates drift higher if the feds nailed it and their algorithms or their ais were accurate and they rushed to get where we are 
and they're able to stop now and hold things where they are. I could picture a scenario where the long end flattens out and uninverts, and you see the 10-year and the 30-year make a little more sense in terms of where the shorter term rates are, and, and that would cause mortgage rates to either stagnate or continue to drift a little higher from where they are. You know, his thought is we're already in a recession and the Fed is going to have to pivot and, and that'll cause the long end to make more sense to the short end because when they pivot, same thing, the yields will invert or uninvert and you'll see the long end make more sense in, into the short end as well. Either way, we both have a long-term view that the, the yield uninverts. And where we differ is, you know, on my viewpoint, I don't see this huge recession. I think a so soft landing is possible. And from his viewpoint, he still sees this recession, but it, uninverting, and typically, you know, that's the start of when you really feel the recession. But what I see in mortgage is we're slow, but there's still business, you know? It's not like nothing is going on. People still want to own homes. The ones that have accepted that they're more expensive than they used to be move along and buy a house. You know, the reality is even if house prices drop and rates come down and, 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 you have to still be in the position to afford and purchase a home. You know, the, the basics are there no matter what. The, the thing that stays stagnant in a home is the price. I don't really worry about the mortgage the same way. I worry about what I'm paying for it and if I can afford the payments. You know, I, I look in the comment sections on a lot of the videos on YouTube as well. And, and it's kind of crazy. I don't want to, well, there are a lot of rational people. A lot of the ones yelling and screaming in my mind, just guessing off of their little comments, probably were never in the position to buy, nor will they be, unless they fix the things in their life. You know, getting angry and just saying it's not affordable but not being in the right position to buy it isn't a solution. Always put yourself in a good position. Have good credit, have good income, make sure it's stable, you know, things like that. Ranting and raving that the government's out to get you and they've done this on purpose and everything else. Not really sure that that's productive, nor do I think it does anything to help put you in a better position. I really think that rates around five, six, seven percent are really fair, to be honest. Uh, I worry we could end up going much higher, but it, forget all the mortgage and everything else. If I were lending somebody money to buy a house, I'd want to make sure they had equity I was comfortable with. And as a minimum, I'd want five, six, seven percent. I mean, I'd be asking for more because there's risk out there and I'd want more return. I think it's pretty reasonable that the government guarantees them and that the banks are able to lend it 6 or 7%. You know, just try to think of it in those terms. When we were down in the twos and threes, not sarcastic, even <laughs> me doing it for a living, and I understand how the system works, I thought the banks were nuts to, to lend at those rates. Why would you want to lend at 3% return? You know, I, I want to borrow at 3% because I figure I can find things that I can do better with. So the banks should be thinking the same way. You know, there, there seems to be a disconnect on their end where they just look at overnight lending and try to make a, a spread to, to borrow and lend instead of thinking about the rationale behind it. You know, and I've seen enough YouTubes that talk about our rates are going back down to zero. If that's the case, and I can borrow more at 2 and 3%, I'd be looking to borrow again. It, it's just, it's too cheap. You know, every now and then I'm in a position where I can lend money. When rates were that low, 
I, I would just wasn't interested. Now we're getting to points where my ears perk up and I listen. Not only that, when rates were that low, I refinanced anything I could and borrowed what I could. Ah. I just thought we went too low, didn't really get it. I called my clients and suggested they refinance as well. I'd say a quarter of them or more thought I was just sales pitch, telling them to refinance so I could get a commission. You know, it's just not how I operate. If they called me today asking about refinance, I'd be concerned, you know? No reason if you can afford your payment to reestablish 30 years on your loan. Now, there are ways around that. You know, especially now with rates higher, if somebody's contacting me about a refinance, I get super concerned. Uh-oh, got some bug chasing me around. Um, if you're falling behind on your bills, the last thing you want to do is take on more debt to get caught up. I mean, I guess if you're consolidating higher interest rate ones, but I find generally if you've run behind and you're taking out more money, you're just going to speed up the process of where you're running behind and extend the timeline before you have to make an adjustment. So, yeah, when rates are at 25 to 4%, it's a great opportunity to, to refinance. But when they're pushing 7 8 I don't know, maybe even 9% if you're doing a cash out and you're trying to take out too much equity. I, I don't really see that as a great solution unless you have some investment that you think you're doubling your money that isn't running to the casino. I would be careful of anybody who's just pushing things that seem self-serving all the time, you know? I, I understood how the clients felt. You know, I've been on the other side, but... Fortunately, I just don't need to push things like that. There's no need. I really saw it as such a great opportunity. You know, there's one client in particular. I was pretty much harassing the guy, and he never refinanced. Another one that I was so annoyed with because he kept dragging his feet along, where my business partner was kind enough to give him the rate where things were when, when he started this process. I would have never done it. I mean, the lack of trust and, and thinking that there's something else going on, on other than what I'm saying gets really frustrating to me. And, and I figure then don't do it because it, it's really rare that I'm pushing something like that. But during COVID, when rates were low, really felt to me like an opportunity of a, of a lifetime. The Fed was holding rates down on purpose to try to stimulate the economy, and they did it too long. But as someone in mortgage who has clients, that's their opportunity to, to take advantage of those situations, and I really thought it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I don't think we'll see those again, which is why I have a tough time with the gloom and doomers who, who picture all calamity and going back down to 0% interest rates. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that again. I think we could see things drift back into the low sixes or fives, but I don't know that it will even see the fours again. Maybe we're fortunate enough to in some ways, but... I think house prices will go through the roof. There is still a lack of inventory. That's not some made-up media scheme. So, either way, enjoy your weekend. Have a great day. I think I'll post this. If you've lasted this long, I forgot to say, do me a favor, give a thumbs up, subscribe, you know, make a comment, chime in, let me know what you think. I'm happy to discuss any of it.